Probably 18 inches of drywall again. A lot of these outlets will have to be replaced again. Cabinetry again. Thankfully, the tile, as Peter points out, uh, will survive with a little bit of Clorox and a good mopping and a couple of the fans. But boy, it, 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 we can't say it often enough. The toll that these kinds of floods take on people, and it doesn't matter if you get an inch or two inches or nine inches uh, or a foot, it is enough to, to truly upend your life for months uh, as you rebuild. Yeah, and Ted, you are so right about that, and I'd forgotten it was as recent as May when Kingwood was hit so hard in that last series of uh, really heavy rains there. Uh, so our hearts just go out to those folks. Thank Emotional you. exhaustion is the perfect way to describe it for so many people in our city who have had to go through this more yeah. than once. It is so very sad. Ted, thanks for bringing us it that really compelling is. report. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ted. You got it, guys. Uh, well, no, I, I was just going to say that I, I, I think it's hard to it's hard to think about how many people uh, have to go through this. We, we think it didn't rain. We think uh, it, it, this much wherever you might live. But remember, these are people uh, who, whose story is going to be repeated all the way around this curve. Yeah. But because nine inches of water in one home, it means six inches of water in the next. And it's, it's enough. It's enough to create a, a, a yet a, again months of a neighborhood having to rebuild. It's unfair. It, it really is. Yeah. There's just there, there maybe not someone to blame in, in, in person, but it is simply it is unfair for these neighborhoods to have to go through this again and again. And again. It really is. And what's so frustrating, as you mentioned as well, Ted, and we thank you for the report, is that they didn't receive anything during Harvey. And the, the, if that's the marker, then as we look at uh, the city and its flooded state now, then this flood right here, well, there they have six inches of or nine inches of uh, water in their house. So very sad. But Don Armstrong live in Sky Eye. And Don, boy, you've just taken the aerial view of this city, and there it is. Uh, that looks like I-45. Is that what it is? Is that the one that's backed up and that's completely flooded? Right. Right. This, is, this is our first opportunity to get airborne. Obviously, the weather has prevented us and kept us on the ground uh, all these hours. But we finally have managed to get up. And as you can see, there's downtown from a view that's just north of the downtown Houston area. And that traffic that you're looking at there, that's uh, 45 northbound traffic and uh, uh, over uh, White Oak and Buffalo Bayous, where those two bayous uh, uh, come together down here just north of downtown. We're going to take a right-hand turn here. Dale, if we can get you to turn with us, uh, you, you can see uh, the uh, Dale, uh, if we could turn, go north here, uh, working with the Dale Pike, our uh, Czech Airman pilot this afternoon. And as you can see, this is I-45 traffic that is now southbound. We're looking up toward the north. And as you can see, it is an absolute standstill nightmare. There are uh, trucks, vehicles all flooded in here, uh, vehicles that uh, obviously are not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Uh, look at the people that are standing on the bridge down here over uh, I-45 at North Main Street. This is an absolute nightmare, and this is the scene all over town from what I have seen on your broadcast uh, sitting at the airport all afternoon. But look at this traffic, an absolute nightmare on 45, and this is the case on many of the freeways. This is the first one that uh, we have flown over, and I'm, I'm, I'm quite surprised at all of this, but uh, with the bayous overrunning uh, the overpasses downtown, this is what you get, and as you can see, it's going to be a while before this clears. Yeah, and we have seen this time and time and time again, right, Don? I mean, it, it seems every flood, these overpasses or these, you know, these, these freeways flood, the ones that are near bayous like this, it is so very sad. And as you know, Art, these, uh, this portion of the 45 is uh, actually below grade. It's below level. There's there's the grade right there, where that bridge that goes across. And uh, so everything that's underneath uh, all of this, including I-10 out there uh, between Washington and downtown, that's sunken down, if you will, all of those always go underwater. This is nothing new. We've seen it time and time again, as you say. Yeah, unbelievable. So what we're seeing uh, in many cases is just that, uh, that water rising up out of the bayou and just bringing everything to an absolute stop. And it's always pretty awful because the folks in the back have no idea what the holdup is, so they continue to get on to the freeway uh, not knowing that there is nowhere to go at a certain point. And you know, Melody, I, I saw on an earlier broadcast uh, about Tidwell up here on 45 North. Now, those are the cars that you see the taillights there on yeah. the right-hand 